If you're working with modern JavaScript, then you might be using let and const keywords for creating variables in JavaScript. There's also a third keyword, the var keyword, which lets you create variables in JavaScript. But for this video, I'm not going to cover var. We're just going to take a look at let and const. We are going to cover the difference between the two. We're going to understand what is the scope of let and const variables and what is scope in the first place and also cover a few other related concepts like temporal dead zone, shadowing, redeclarations in this video. First, let's take a look at the difference between let and const. The let keyword lets you create reassignable variables. For example, if I create a variable called let x, then I could assign it any value any number of times as long as this variable lives. So I could do x equals to 10 and I could reassign it a value as and when I want. Now the thing with let variables is that you don't need to initialize them when you are creating them and the default value that they take up when you create a let variable is undefined. So if you try to do let x and then try to print console.log x, it will print undefined. Whereas const on the other hand lets you create constants. So constants are variables whose values remain constant throughout their lifetime. And one more important thing, when you create a constant, you must initialize it with a value. So you can't do something like const y and not provide it a value. This results in a syntax error missing initializer in const declaration. So let's create a const variable and then initialize it. So let's do const y equals to 10. Now, if you try to reassign a new value to y, you won't be able to do that. For example, if I do y equals to 20, this will now result in a type error saying that assignment to a constant variable is not allowed. So there you go. That's the difference between let and const. Let variables can be reassigned a value throughout their lifetime and constants cannot be reassigned once they are initialized. You can choose to initialize a let variable or you could leave it uninitialized. That's perfectly fine in JavaScript, but you must initialize a constant when you are creating one. Let's talk about the scope of let and const variables. But before we understand what scope is, we need to talk about blocks. So what are blocks? Any set of statements that are surrounded by curly brackets or curly braces form a block. For example, I have a block here. Inside this block, I've created a comment and then I have two statements. So this forms a block. This is also known as a block statement or a compound statement. Blocks are used to group together a set of statements. You may not have seen blocks by themselves inside of a JavaScript program, but you will usually find them as part of an if statement or as part of a function body or in switch statements or as the body of loops. You can also nest a block within another. So here I've nested the simple standalone block inside of this another block or these two blocks could very well be part of an if statement or part of a function. Okay, now that you understand what a block is, let's understand what scope is. You can think of scope as a hypothetical area or a time in your program where a certain variable is accessible and visible. For example, let's say this circle is the scope of this x variable. When you try to use x inside of this circle, which represents the scope of x, you're able to access x. So by access, I mean you're able to print it, you're able to manipulate it, you're able to assign it values, you're able to perform operations on it. But as soon as you go outside of the scope, or when you try to access this x variable outside of its scope, you will land into errors. So this circle is just just for illustration purposes, JavaScript has the following actual kinds of scope. The first one is the global scope. Global meaning universal, global meaning everything. The global scope is the default scope for everything inside of your JavaScript program. Everything, all the code comes under the global scope. But the global scope is only present in something known as the script mode. When you're using JavaScript in module mode, which is when you're using import and export statements, that is the module mode in JavaScript script, then the scope of the code inside of that particular module becomes a module scope. We won't be covering module mode in our examples. We'll mostly be using our examples in the script mode. After the global scope, there's a function scope. When you create a function, you create an 
function scope. Then at the last comes a block scope. Note that a function also creates a block with the help of these curly braces but the function scope is a special type of a block scope and it is treated a little bit differently. All the blocks apart from a function form the block scope. So everything that is wrapped within curly braces forms a block scope. Now let's understand the scope of let and const variables in JavaScript. Let's take a look at an example here. So I have created a block here. Inside of the block, I've created a let variable, let x equals to two, and I've printed x on the next line. So it does as expected, it prints the value two. Now outside of this block, I have again done console.log x, but this time, instead of printing two, I land into an error, uncaught reference error x is not defined. Think of it like this, the scope in this case is this block. When you try to access this x variable outside of this block, you land into this reference error. This behavior tells you that let variables are block scoped, meaning that the scope of x variables is the block that they are created or defined in. Similarly, const variables are also block scoped. So if you take this same example and instead of doing let x equals to 2, even if you did const x equals to 2, the behavior or the error will still be the same. You'll be able to access x inside of the block but outside the block you land into a reference error. Now this block could be any block, a simple block statement wrapped within curly braces or it could be a part of a switch statement which is inside of a case. For example, if you do switch true and then do case true, and create a new variable inside of this switch statement. So let's say case true x equals to 1 and then try to print this x outside of this block. This will result in a reference error. Similarly, the block could be a part of a try or catch statement or it could be a part of the for statement or, or it could be a part of the function's body or it could also be a part of something known as a static initialization block. We won't cover that in this video or in the case when there is no block outside of any block, you've created a let variable, then the scope of that let variable becomes the global scope or if it's within a module, then the scope of the x variable becomes the module scope. Let's take a look at an example here. So outside of any block, I've created a let variable called let global variable and I've signed it the value I'm a global variable. Then I've created a function and inside of this function, I've created a block variable. So const block variable equals to I'm a block variable. And then outside of this function, I have tried to print the global variable. So console.log global variable. Since I've created this console.log statement in the global scope and the global variable is created in the global scope. So I'm able to access it without any errors. Then I call the global function. And then after calling this global function, I've created one more console statement, which is console.log block variable. This will result in an error because this block variable was created inside of the function block. So the scope of this constant block variable becomes this global function or the function scope in this case. Okay, now you know that let and const variables are block scoped. But what will happen if I try to access a let or const variable before I create it, but I'm accessing it within the same block. So this is what I mean. Let's take a look at some code. So I have created this new block and inside of this block, I am doing let x equals to two. So we know that we are able to access it inside of this block. So after this, I can do console.log equals to x. And outside of this block, if I try to do console.log x, it will result in an error because I'm trying to access x outside of its scope. But what will happen if I do this? So before I do let x equals to two, if I try to do console.log x, what will happen in this case? Well, as you can see, this results in an error, but the error message in this case is slightly different. So instead of saying x is not defined as it would say if you try to access it outside of its scope, it says that you cannot access x before initialization. So what happens here? is that when you create a letter const variable, before the execution reaches the line where it's created, this variable lives in something known as the temporal dead zone. So the temporal dead zone begins as soon as the block starts and the temporal dead zone ends when you create the actual variable. 
when you try to access let or const variables in the temporal dead zone that results in an error notice that the temporal dead zone is dependent on the order of execution of these statements but not the actual position of these statements so this is what i mean so if i create an arrow function here const print x and inside of this function if i do console.log x this is fine because i'm just creating this function i'm not executing this function after creating this function i actually create the the x variable now by the time the execution reaches till this line now the temporal dead zone for this x variable is over so if i try to call print x after let x equals to 3 this is completely fine even though this function or this statement console.log x statement ap appears before the creation of x however if you try to execute print x before x is created then again it will lead to an error because now the function is executed inside of the temporal dead zone Okay, so again, quickly, let's just summarize. Let and const variables are block scoped. You cannot access these variables outside of the blocks they are created in. And if you try to access these variables within the same block, but before they are actually created, then it also results in an error due to something known as the temporal dead zone. Now let's move on to redeclaration. So you might be aware of the fact that you cannot create two variables of the same name within the same scope. So if you try to do let x, and then if you try to do const x, this will result in a syntax error saying that identifier x has already been declared. So you cannot redeclare a letter const variable or any other variable for that matter with the same name within the same scope. But what will happen if you try to do it within a nested scope? Let's take a look at an example. So you cannot do let x and let x, but what if you do let x equals to 10 and then create a new block scope using curly braces and then inside of this block, again, create a new let x variable. Well, this is perfectly normal in JavaScript. This is also known as variable shadowing. So this, these curly braces introduce a new block scope. So since this is a new scope, so you can create new unique variables inside of it. If you try to do console.log x inside of this block, now this x within this scope refers to its own scoped variable. If you do console.log x, it will print 20. And if you do console.log x outside of this block scope, now we are in the global scope. And now in this scope, the value of x is 10. Now one more thing before we end this video, what if I do const x equals to 10 and then create a new block and then inside of this block, what if I try to do console.log x? So we know that this block creates a new block scope, but inside of this new block scope, we have not created another constant called x. This block does not have a constant with the name x. So what will happen in this case? In this case, the value of x that will be printed is 10. Here's why. Since the inner block does not have its own x, it will then look for this x variable in its parent scope. If its parent scope also does not have any variable, then it will look at its parent's parent scope. And if its parent's parent scope also does not have any x, and if that scope is the final or the global scope, then that will result in an error. Okay, so we have covered a lot of concepts in this video. I'm going to cover the var keyword in the next video and talk about what's the difference between var and let and const. But before we end this, I want you to answer this question. So I have let x equals to 10 in the global scope. Then I've created a block scope. Inside of that block scope, I've done console.log x. And then after that, I have done let x equals to 20. And then after that, I've done console.log x. What will be the output of these console statements? Or is this going to result in an error? Leave your answers in the comment section below. I will be posting the answer to this question on my Instagram. You can find the link to it in the description box below. I'll see you in the next video.